Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. Tonight I'm doing a brief video on how to use and interpret a timographer. Now bear in mind, I myself am learning how to use this, so be sure to check out the Beyond the Dial article that I've linked in the description below because they go into amazing amounts of detail on each reading of the timographer. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll take my favorite watch and put it on the timographer and we'll see how it does. Also, at the end of this video, I'll give you an update on my pull router that I just recently received. So let's get started. So here it is, the device that we use to measure the overall health of a mechanical watch's movement. This right here is the microphone portion, and then here we have the device itself with its readout and some labels letting us know what they are. When I first got this, the microphone was oriented with the clamp on the bottom, and having only seen a couple of videos where these were used, I had no idea that it was even there and was getting frustrated with the way watches were just falling off of the microphone and the terrible readings that I was getting. With this, you can clip your watch in there and you can set it to different positions. Here, dial up, which is what I usually do is dial up. Now on the timographer itself, this one here was a gift from my wife and it's not the highest end timographer by any means, but it does the trick. So as I mentioned, this is the microphone and it records the sounds of the mechanical movement as it's ticking and working away. And it uses that to interpret various aspects of the movement. So in the center here, we have a screen. And when I have this turned on in a little bit, this will display the trace or how the watch is performing in real time. It does so by displaying dots moving across the screen with every tick of the watch. So if those dots are climbing, the watch is fast. If they're going down, the watch is slow. And if there's a snow field, then there's seriously something wrong with the movement. And the first one is the rate error. This measures the watch's accuracy in seconds per day. So you'll see values like minus 20, indicating that it's going 20 seconds slow each day or maybe plus five, at which point it's gaining five seconds every day. So of course, zero would be ideal. And the next one is the amplitude. And this is a measure of the amount of power that the drivetrain is receiving from the mainspring. It measures this by calculating how much the balance wheel is spinning, because that'll determine how much power it's receiving. This value differs depending on the movement. For example, Swiss movements should have an amplitude of somewhere around 300. Other movements in good health will probably be somewhere around 200. The next value we have is the beat error. And this measures the difference between the watch's tick and its talk. So the balance wheel spins one way, it measures that, and when it spins the other way, it measures that and shows us the difference. This is given in milliseconds. And again, ideally, we want to have a zero here, but anything up to 0.4 milliseconds is acceptable. Once you get up past that, that's no good. That indicates that you have an issue with your balance wheel and it'll affect your accuracy, and I believe will make it more difficult to fine tune the watch's performance. The last one here actually shows us two different things. The first is the beat rate, or vibrations per hour. That is how many times the watch ticks per hour, and that is usually automatically determined by the timographer. If it can't determine that, then there's probably something seriously wrong with the movement. It also displays the lift angle, and that's a value that has to be manually entered, and it differs per movement. So you may have to do some searching online to see what that should be for your movement. If it is incorrect, it can affect the amplitude by, I believe, 10%. So far, I've just left that at whatever values in this, 
At some point I'll go online and get a more accurate reading though. All right, so let's see the Timographer in action. So I have my favorite watch in my collection, the Max Bill. It's been fully wound. Let's hook it up to the microphone. And this is gonna be a little bit loud here, but we'll turn it on. And it fires up and it is detecting the beat rate. And here we go. So looking at the trace, we see that it's making a nice clean line, but it is moving upward. So this watch is fast. And we can see that indicated in the rate value, which sadly is gaining 22 seconds per day. So every day this watch will be 22 seconds ahead of what it should be. If we look at the amplitude, it looks pretty healthy at 332 degrees. So that's good. And look at that beat error, 0.0, .0. beautiful. And then over here, we can see it toggling between the vibrations per hour and the angle. So in looking at these values, I would guess that all this watch would need for this to be cleaned up is a little bit of fine tuning on the uh, balance wheels adjustment. And in this movement, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, whether it's a screw where you can adjust it or some movements will have a little pin that you can move faster or slower. But all in all, this looks like a pretty healthy movement. So I just recently got a pull router and when I put it on the timographer, it didn't look very healthy. But I decided to wear it for a while, see how it does, see if I can wait until January to send it off for a servicing. However, after wearing it for a few days, it actually ran out of power reserve. So it's either not holding a charge or the automatic works has an issue with it. So I sent it off to TikTok watch repairs. And the good news is they opened up the back and the movement looks beautiful. And it is a pull router movement, so that's a good thing. Now the servicing is going to be kind of spendy. And if there is something wrong with the automatic works, that's going to add another few hundred to the servicing. They aren't going to know how much it's going to cost until they actually get in there and determine what might need replaced. So when I hear back from them, I'll give you another update on that watch. So there you have it, a brief explanation on how to use a timographer and how to interpret the values that it displays when it's reading a watch. Thanks for watching. Thank you.